An ideal regenerative Rankine cycle with an open feed water heater uses water as the working fluid. The turbine inlet is operated at 500 psi and 600 degrees Fahrenheit, and the condenser is operated at 5 psi. Steam is supplied to the feed water heater at 40 psi. Determine and complete the following. First, Y, the proportion of mass flow rate that is brought out of the turbine early to feed the open feed water heater, then the specific work in relative to the cycle as a whole, and then the thermal efficiency. I will begin by trying to identify two independent intensive properties about all seven state points. Once I have those identified, looking up whatever properties I need is just a matter of putting in the time. I will start that process by posing the question, how many different pressures do I have? You're right, I have three. They were given to us, 500, 5, and 40. Now which state points have which pressure? Well, 4 and 5 have the high pressure, and 1 and 7 have the low pressure. Remember that all heat exchange processes in the Rankine cycle are assumed to happen at a constant pressure, meaning that 6, 2, and 3 are all going to be maintained at a constant pressure. That open feed water heater still counts as a heat exchange process, even though no heat actually crosses the boundary. Furthermore, since the open feed water heater is just a box with three holes, there's not much opportunity for any pressure changes to be meaningful relative to 5, 40, and 500. So we have a high pressure at 4 and 5, we have a low pressure at 7 and 1, and then we have the medium pressure at 2, 3, and 6. Remember that within imperial unit notation schemes, PSIA indicates an absolute pressure, as opposed to PSIG, which indicates a gauge pressure. I will assign those pressures to our seven state points. Next, I recognize that I was given a temperature of 600 degrees Fahrenheit at the turbine inlet, which would be state point five. And then I recognize that because I was given no indication as to the isentropic efficiency of the pumps nor the turbine, I'm going to assume that all three are 100% efficient, meaning that S2 is equal to S1, S4 is equal to S3, and S7 and S6 are both equal to S5. So at state 5, I have enough information to fix our entropy, which is then used to look up properties at states six and seven at state one i need one more property to look up s1 and at state three i need one more property to look up s3 my next observation will be that the condenser is assumed to only condense it doesn't subcool or supercool the substance, it just allows the water vapor to condense, and then once it has condensed, it leaves. So the output of the condenser, state point one, is assumed to be a freshly condensed, saturated liquid. That assumption is pretty cut and dry. The condenser operates in a very reliable and predictable manner. But we're also going to make the same assumption about the open feed water heater. We're going to assume that 6 and 7 are positioned in such a way so as to allow state 3 to be a saturated liquid. I think that'll make a little bit more sense once we look at our TS diagram. But for now, just assume that state 3 is also a saturated liquid. We want our pumps to only handle liquid, not a mixed stream of liquid and vapor. I will put an asterisk here to know that that is an assumption that we are making. Now that I have two independent intensive properties defined for all seven state points, looking up what we need is just a matter of putting in the time, and what we're going to want is enthalpies. Let's assume for the moment that we had done that. Let's not spend any more example problem time on that. Let's say that we had looked up H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6 and H7. What would we do now? 
Well, traditionally, we would calculate the specific work in, the specific Q in, the specific workout, and the specific Q out. Again, those might not be exactly what I need to be able to answer the individual questions in order, but it's good character building nonetheless. So let's try that here. Let's determine a specific work in, a specific Q in, a specific workout, and a specific Q out. I will begin with work in. What is the specific work in to this cycle? I'll give you a hint. It is not H4 minus H3 plus H2 minus H1. Why is it not? Because we are now starting to deal with multiple streams of mass flow rate. We define our specific work in relative to the cycle by describing it as the power input to the cycle divided by what we call the mass flow rate through the cycle, which is the biggest mass flow rate appearing. It is the overall mass flow rate. So when the streams split and are recombined, we are describing the combined stream. The power input would be the power input to the two individual pumps. And then we recognize that our power input to both pumps is just going to be mass flow rate times change in enthalpy. So I could describe the power input to pump one as m dot one or two times the quantity H2 minus H1. And then the power input to pump two would be m dot three or m dot four times the quantity H4 minus H3. Then we are defining this entire thing by m dot cycle. And at this point, we have a problem. And that problem is we don't actually know the mass flow rates. We have no indication as to how big this cycle is. Since we can't calculate the mass flow rates, we can't calculate the specific work in, the specific Q in, the specific workout, and the specific Q out, right? We can. We can because we don't actually care about the mass flow rates themselves. All that really matters for this calculation is the relative proportion of the mass flow rates. So if we were to write this as a proportion of mass flow rates, I'm essentially splitting the denominator here. So I'm writing m.1 over m dot cycle times the quantity h2 minus h1 plus m.3 divided by m dot cycle times h4 minus h3. It's not the mass flow rates that matter, it is the proportion of mass flow rates that matters. But what is mass flow rate of the cycle anyway? Well, since we are splitting the stream in the turbine and then recombining in the open feed water heater, 3, 4, and 5 will all have the overall mass flow rate. And then some percentage of that will go into the stream at 6, and the leftover percentage will go into 7, 1, and 2. If you think of it like if 25% of the mass flow rate at 5 goes into state 6, then whatever's left, the remaining 75% must go into the stream at 7. And those proportions are what we care about in these calculations. That proportion of mass flow rate at five that leaves as six, we could indicate with a variable instead of having to keep track of it. We call that variable y. Therefore, y is the proportion of mass flow rate five, which leaves at six, and then whatever's left over, We'll leave at 7. So if y was 0.25, 25% of the steam from 5 is leaving at 6, and the remaining 75% is leaving at 7. So now we can begin to write our specific quantities in terms of either y, 1 minus y, or 1. And remember, m.1 is equal to 
m.2, which is equal to m.7. m.6 stands alone. And then m.3, m.4, and m.5 are also all equal to each other. And this quantity, m.3 or m.4 or m.5, is what we're calling m dot cycle. So, in this calculation, does m dot one over m dot cycle become one y or one minus y? You're right. It becomes one minus y because m dot one is equal to m dot seven, and m dot five is equal to m dot cycle. Therefore, m dot one over m dot cycle is equal to m dot seven over m dot five, which is one minus y. Then, does m dot three over m dot cycle become one y or one minus y? You're right. It's one because m dot three and m dot cycle are equivalent. Therefore. I write my specific work in as 1 minus y times h2 minus h1 plus h4 minus h3. If you had just written h2 minus h1 plus h4 minus h3, you are neglecting to account for the fact that different mass flow rates flow through those two pumps. The mass flow rate through pump 1 is not the same as the mass flow rate through pump 2, so I can't just add the specific quantities together. Cool. One quantity down. Three more to go. What is the specific Qn to this cycle? You're right, it's H5 minus H4. The reason it's just H5 minus H4 is because the mass flow rate going through the boiler is the mass flow rate of the cycle. So if I were to write Q dot in divided by M dot cycle, and then substitute in M dot 4 times the quantity H5 minus H4 divided by M dot cycle, that would simplify down to 1 times the quantity h5 minus h4. Now the specific workout is a little bit more complicated than just taking a difference in enthalpy. The reason it's a little bit more complicated this time is because I have more than one inlet and outlet. Both 6 and 7 are exiting mass flow rates. So in order to yield the correct equation, I should really step back and do an energy balance. I recognize that I have steady state operations, so it's going to be most convenient for me to divide all three terms by dt, at which point I have dE dt is equal to e dot in minus e dot out. dE dt is zero because the turbine is assumed to operate steadily. Therefore, e dot in will equal e dot out. For an open system, energy could cross the boundary as heat transfer, work, or the sum in of m dot theta. Then I neglect heat transfers because I have an isentropic turbine. Isentropic implies adiabatic. I have a turbine, so I'm neglecting the work in. And remember that theta contains enthalpy plus specific kinetic energy plus specific potential energy. And then I have one inlet and two outlets, so I will write this as m.5 h5 is equal to, what am I doing? This should be an outlet. Got all confident with my copy and paste. Excuse me.
And that's equal to the power output on the right, plus the sum of the two m dot h terms. So that would be m dot 6 h6 plus m dot 7 h7. Therefore, my power output would be m dot 5 h5 minus m dot 6 h6 minus m dot 7 h7. And then I'm dividing this entire quantity by m dot cycle. So first question, what is m.5 divided by m.cycle? Is it 1, y, or 1 minus y? You're right, it's 1. So my specific work in would begin with 1 times h5 minus. Then is m.6 over m.cycle y, 1 minus y, or 1? You're right, it's y. So y times h6 minus is m.7 over m.cycle y, 1 minus y, or 1. It's 1 minus y. Therefore, my workout, my specific workout for this cycle, would be h5 minus y h6 minus 1 minus y h7. And I will point out here that depending on which source you're looking at, some textbooks prefer to write this in terms of y a little bit more easily. So they will take h5 minus y times h6 minus h7 plus y times h7. And then they will bring together the y terms so they can factor it out and write this as h5 minus h7 plus y times the quantity h7 minus h6. And the reason that they do that is, I don't know, presumably to write it in terms of only one y so that they can solve for y a little bit more conveniently. This is also uh, an interesting way of writing out the specific works of the individual sides of the turbine. I don't I'm of the opinion that writing it this way is no more convenient than writing it this way, so I'm not going to do that, but just a heads up. You might see it appear like that. And it's not that it's a different equation, it's just rewritten based on what someone else deems is convenient. So we're left here with our specific Q out. And for our specific Q out, we need to look at our condenser. So again, specific Q out would be the total rate of Q out divided by m dot cycle. The total rate of Q dot out would be m dot 7 or m dot 1 times the quantity h7 minus h1. And dividing that by m dot cycle would yield 1 minus y times h7 minus h1. And just to be consistent here, I will write both of these as their rate term divided by m dot cycle. So if someone only looks at the sheet and doesn't watch the video, they can hopefully follow what's going on, at least a little bit more easily. Okay. It is convenient for us to write out the specific works and heat transfers in terms of just enthalpies and the y value because I have enough information to get all the h's. All I need now to finish the problem is y. Now, how do I determine y? The trick to determining y is I need to perform an energy balance on something about which I know everything. So I can't perform it on the boiler because I don't know Q in. I can't perform it on the pumps because I don't know work in. I can't perform it on the turbine because I don't know work out. And I can't perform it on the condenser because I don't know Q out. That leaves me with the open feed water heater. I know the open feed water heater itself is adiabatic because just like the regenerator in the Brayton cycle, there is no meaningful opportunity for heat to cross the boundary. 
we assume all of the heat transfer occurs internally and there's no opportunities for work, which means if I were to write out an energy balance on the open feedwater heater, Just like with the turbine, we are going to end up with e dot in is equal to e dot out. And just like the turbine, e dot in could be q dot in plus work dot in plus the sum in of m dot theta. And e dot out could be q dot out plus work dot out plus the sum out of m dot theta. I'm neglecting works and heat transfers. And inside of the theta term, I'm neglecting changes in specific kinetic energy and specific potential energy, which leaves me with the sum in of m dot h is equal to the sum out of m dot h. I have two inlets, states 2 and 6. I have one outlet, state 3. So I can write this as m dot 2 h2 plus m dot 6 h6 is equal to m dot 3 h3. Now what? Well now, just like in the turbine, it behooves me to divide everything by m dot cycle. That would allow me to write this in terms of y and 1 minus y and 1 instead of mass flow rates. So is m dot 2 divided by m dot cycle y 1 minus y or 1? You're right, it's 1 minus y. Is m dot 6 divided by m dot cycle y 1 minus y or 1? You're right, it's y. And is m dot 3 divided by m dot cycle y 1 minus y or 1? You're right, it's 1. So now I want to solve this equation for y, because remember, we have enough information to determine all of our enthalpies. So I'm going to jump into determining y knowing these enthalpies. To do that, I will do a little bit of algebra here. So all it would take to finish our problem is looking up our seven enthalpies. Once we have them, we can calculate y. Once we have y, we can calculate the specific work in, the specific q in, the specific work out, and the specific q out. And once we have those, we can determine the thermal efficiency. And in that process, we would have answered part A, B, and C. Since this is thermo 2 and property lookups are assumed to be mastered in thermo 1, I'm not going to spend any more example problem time on the property lookups themselves. So now I'm going to cut to the end of the property lookup process so that we can spend more time on the thermo 2 side of things. I will leave my work attached to this document, so if you want to download the PDF of this work from the box below the video, you are welcome to try to follow along with what I'm doing, but I'm not going to dedicate more video time to it. So you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. And with that, we have all seven enthalpies and the entropies it took to get us there. With those enthalpies, my next step would be to calculate y. So y is going to be h3 minus h2 divided by h6 minus h2. And for that, we need to go back up to these numbers. h3 minus h2 is going to be 236.16 minus 130.28 divided by h6 minus h2. 1085.02 minus 130.28, and I get a y value of 0 
And now I can proceed to calculating the specific work in, the specific queue in, the specific work out, and the specific queue out. And for that, I am going to open up a new page and copy these equations over. and then give us some space to work. There we go. So first up, I had one minus y times h2 minus h1 plus h4 minus h3. So that's going to be one minus this quantity here times h2 minus h1, 130.28 minus 130.17, plus h4 minus h3, and that was 239.17 minus 236.16. Don't really need the parentheses, but I'm in 3.1078. BTUs per pound mass. Then QN is just H5 minus H4. So 1298.3 minus 239.17. That's 1059.13. And then I want my specific workout, which is H5 minus Y H6 minus one minus Y H7. So that's 1298.3 minus 0 0.110899 times 1085.02 minus the quantity one minus Y times 954.18 and I get 329.61. And then Q out was 1 minus Y times H7 minus H1. So 1 minus, oh, sorry, you can't see my calculator. 1 minus Y times H7 minus H1, 954.18 minus 130.17, giving me 732.629. Then next I want the network out and the net heat transfer in. So work out minus work in is going to be this quantity here minus this quantity here. I get 326.502 and then Q in minus Q out is going to be this quantity here minus this quantity here. I got the same number which is a sign that I built those equations correctly. It's not quite as easy to take for granted once you start involving Y into things. And then the thermal efficiency, which is the network out divided by the heat transfer in and I get 30.8%. So A was down here. B was here.
and C is down here. And that's all I needed for the problem, but you guys know what I want to do next. I want to draw a TS diagram. Wouldn't really be an example problem if we didn't draw a TS diagram, right? And my TS diagram is going to be drawn relative to the saturation lines, which I will draw the best of my ability. That's quite a squiggle there at the end. Okay, a little bit more skewed. There we go. That will do for now. Shouldn't quite curl up at the end, but you know, TS diagram is gonna TS diagram. Now I want three lines of constant pressure corresponding to 540 and 500, and I will draw those somewhat arbitrarily. I don't actually want this to be to scale. All I want is that relative positioning of state points. These correspond to 5 PSI. Forty PSI and five hundred PSI. And for states one and three, I have a quality of zero, so those are going to be the easiest to start with. It's a quality of zero on the low pressure and medium pressure line. So one is whoops. The so one is here, and three is here. And then two and four are directly above. Then state point five was a superheated vapor and at a temperature of 467.13 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to draw that up here. Then states 6 and 7 are directly below it. I should have a saturated liquid vapor mixture for both of them, which I do. The quality of state 6 was about 0.91, and the quality for state 7 was about 0.82. Which is pretty close to my drawing. Again, this isn't intended to be perfect in terms of scaling, just to show the relative positioning of our state points. And our cycle diagram goes like this. Here, let me switch these to black. Then we have a straight line from 1 to 2. A state line from 3 to 4. 4 should be out in the compressed liquid region. I don't know what I was doing there. 3 to 4, also a straight vertical line that I'm exaggerating a little bit so that it's actually visible on the TS diagram, and then 4 to 5 is a line of constant pressure, 5 to 6 goes straight down, 5 to 7 also goes straight down, so 5 to 6 are on top of each other, and then 7 back to 1, and 3 is going to be the meeting point of 2 and 6. So earlier when I said I thought 3 would make a little bit more sense when we talk about our TS diagram, what I meant by that was we are primarily using state 2 to condense state 6. So we are bringing some of the steam out. It's a mixture. And we are using the condensation of the steam to heat up our stream at 2. Because remember that 2 and 6 are not actually that different in terms of temperature. The real potential for energy to be moved around is in the latent energy of the steam. So we are condensing state 6 in order to heat up state 2. And we assume that that box is built in such a way that we mix the streams together and we allow the result, the, the liquid at the end of the process, to leave as a saturated liquid. You could design it to try to accomplish some other purpose, but since the operation of the pump relies on the fluid being a liquid, we really want to shoot for a liquid. So it's possible that we could end up slightly in the compressed liquid region at state 3 as well. But we're assuming ideal operation of everything, including but not limited to the regenerator itself. So that's our TS diagram.
and the work, the network out is still the region enclosed by the diagram, but the magnitude itself is a little bit more complicated to try to visualize because it's not just one of these areas, if that makes sense. We have the area enclosed by the mass flow rate that goes from one to two, to three, to four, to five, to seven, to one. And then we also have the region that's enclosed by three to four, to five, to six. So it's a little bit of a doubling up of the area under the curve. But since the goal is to try to increase our network out for a given amount of QN, and that QN process is still just four to five, we can get more network out by stacking the TS diagram on top of itself, if that logic makes sense. And that concludes this example.